This is Crystal Project. It's a beautiful, expansive, super fun JRPG made by one guy, and no one is talking about it. So in this video, I'll be telling you all about my time with Crystal Project and why you need to give it a try. So for starters, what probably grabs you right away and what certainly grabbed me right away is the art style. It's kind of like if Octopath Traveler and Minecraft had a baby. In the bigger, more open areas, it looks a little bit more plain, but it is fun to explore. Now this game does run great, a solid 60 frames per second as far as I can tell. Now currently it's PC only, but considering how simple the visual style is, it should run great on most setups. I'm playing with a quote unquote gaming laptop and it ran really great for me there. Now before anyone asked, the developer said there are no immediate plans for a Switch port, but they would love to do it at some point in the future. Now the other thing about Crystal Project that makes it run really well is the fact that there are no load screens anywhere. Whether it's between different environments, going into dungeons, going into buildings, nothing. It never loads, which is really cool. And also, this is kind of a weird thing that you probably wouldn't expect until you play something that has bad menus, but the menus in this game are just really snappy. They come up right away, they're really easy to navigate. Anytime you're doing anything where you have to select like a move or an item, it just is so snappy and just works really well. Now the main focus here in Crystal Project is exploration. Now it kind of reminds me of From Software games in that there is very little direction given to you and you kind of just have to use your wits and your mind to explore and figure out where to go next. And what helps the exploration really shine in Crystal Project is that a lot of the environments are fairly big. There's a lot to explore and look around and find things. And quite frankly, there's a lot of good variety. And the other thing that I really was not expecting is that it's very platforming heavy. There's a lot of times where you have to make jumps to progress, or there's some places that are locked out until you can jump higher with certain mounts. And speaking of mounts, there are quite a few in the game. The first one you can find is sort of this dinosaur and makes you run a lot faster. There are fish that you can ride. One particular is mainly just for a race, but you can kind of explore the environment as well. There's also an owl that I didn't get to in my time playing, but it looks to be like a flying mount. Now again, just to be clear, you can't mine anything in this game. This is not like Minecraft or Dragon Quest Builders. The environment is what it is. However, you can create shortcuts. For example, there's this one side quest that I did where I had to bring this one NPC character some items, and once I did, they moved down so I could jump on their head, weirdly enough, and kind of traverse the environment much easier. Now, the main goal of the game is to find these giant crystals that are scattered all throughout the world. Now, these giant crystals will be hidden inside dungeons, and typically they're guarded by some sort of boss or one that's really close by. And once you get the crystal, you are granted a new class, and I'll dive into the class system a little bit later. Now, parts of the game are gated off depending on how many crystals you've found. For example, early on in the game, you need to find three before you could enter this sort of proving ground trial area, and there's a big capital city that you can't really leave until you have five crystals and so on and so forth. Now speaking of classes, let's talk about the combat. Now when you begin the game, you start out with a party of four that you can build kind of however you want. You can name them, you can pick their classes, their genders, and some of the more basic classes that you start off with are the ones you would expect like warrior, white mage, monk, things like that. Now to start battles, there isn't random encounters. Thankfully you can see the enemies in the environment and you will initiate battle when you bump into them. Now for the combat itself, it's turn-based and what's really cool is that you can see the turn order at all times on the bottom row. And one unique twist that Crystal Project throws into their combat is that it has sort of a MMO-like aggro system. Now you can get aggro whether it be by doing the most damage, healing the most, or simply taunting enemies. And what's nice is that the game lays out some arrows so you'll see at all times where aggro is going for whatever enemy. And frankly, I love that Crystal Project gives you so many different pieces of information to make strategic decisions. Whether you want to grab aggro from a low defense character or simply choose a different spell depending on how many turns it will take to cast, I just love that you have all this information at your fingertips. And the balance for the most part was pretty solid. The bosses are fairly challenging and normal enemies are fairly easy but can pose a challenge if you're not prepared. And thankfully the battles are pretty fast paced. You won't be bumping into battles all the time and they'll be really slow and a slog. Now outside of the job system and all these different pieces that I laid out, there's not a lot of extra bells and whistles to that. It seems like the battle system is all about your party composition and getting the right skills and pieces together. Now in Crystal Project, whenever you're fighting enemies and you defeat 
them, you get experience points for normal leveling up, but then you also get LP or learn points. Now you use these LP to unlock different class skills and you can only earn LP for a certain class if you have that particular class equipped. And while there are pretty substantial skill trees for each class, you can't unlock whichever one you want in whatever order. There are some skills that have prerequisites. Now what's really neat though is you do have a main class that you equip that will show visually and that's where you build LP for, but you can also equip a secondary job. Now that secondary job can't be leveled up if it's not your main job, but basically you can use that secondary job's class ability, so it's really fun to kind of mix and match and find out which ones meld together the best. Now as you learn abilities with different classes, you can learn passive abilities. Now these passive abilities have point values and you can equip passive abilities up to a value of 10 total. So for example, you might have some passives that are only worth two, some that are worth five, but you can never exceed 10 total. And for me, I really enjoyed trying out all these different classes, seeing how their abilities would go together for all the different characters I was trying to build. Now, hard right turn, the music in this game is amazing. Super melodic, tons of great variety, and if I was just listening to it independent of the game, I never would have guessed that it was for this little small indie game. It just sounds really high quality and fantastic. Now, all this praise aside, Crystal Project is not a perfect game. It certainly has its flaws, so let's talk a little bit about what I didn't like. First off, it's pretty light on story. When you begin the game, there's an NPC that tells you to follow the path to go to a town, but that's pretty much it. And to me, it felt a little too directionless at times. It's not always clear where to go next or if you're really making any progress. Like I said before, in that sense, that's really where it feels like a From Software game. And to be honest with you, I had to consult a walkthrough just to get through the game in certain parts. So I'll leave that in the description if you decide to play this game and you're also feeling a little bit lost. One of the biggest things I had an issue with was the in-game map. Now you don't have a map right away and you'll fill it in as you explore. You need to find the map first and it's not always clear where to find them. Sometimes you'll discover them in a chest in the environment and sometimes you'll buy it from a vendor at a shop. And honestly, even when you do get it, they feel a little bit useless. It's kind of hard to read when you look at it and you can customize it to put markers, but it doesn't have markers itself. So it would have been nicer to have the map be a little bit more useful. Something else that kind of drove me crazy was there's no fast travel. When you get to certain save points throughout the world, you can set it as your home warp point. And basically at any point you can go warp back to the point you set, but not any save point in the world. Now there is a sort of workaround with this. There are temples that you'll find throughout the game and you can buy items to warp back to those temples. And usually they're near the big cities, but not always. I really would have preferred if they had a traditional fast travel in this game because there's a lot of times I'd be bouncing back between different towns to get certain items. And it just would have been easier to do that faster instead of having to explore it on foot. Now, one of the weirder things about Crystal Project is that you can't use items mid battle, only outside of battle until you get a certain class that allows you to use items. And what's even weirder about that class is that you can't just use one for one. You can't use like a revive item. It basically takes two items to use a certain ability. So this is really strange considering almost every JRPG lets you use items with any character. So I'm not sure why they decided to do this. And lastly, for things I didn't really like, there is a bit of a difficulty wall when you get to the game's main city, Sequoia. I had to grind for a little bit and get better items and unfortunately you don't get a ton of money for grinding so it really was a bit of a slog but after that and once I kind of figured out which classes really went well together and I kind of figured out a better strategy the game became much more manageable. While I have some gripes overall I'm really loving my time with Crystal Project. I love the art style, the music is fantastic, and exploration is really rewarding. So far I've put in about 15 hours and to me it seems like those hours have just flown by. One night I literally stayed up until 5am playing and I literally can't remember the last time I did that for anything, so it must be doing something right. Now here's the really cool thing, Crystal Project has a pretty meaty demo. I was able to finish it in about 8 hours, but if you go on the Steam reviews, people are saying they're taking 20 to 30 hours to get through the demo. And the demo does transfer over to the full game, so if you play the demo and really want to play it, it does carry over. Now the game itself is only $13.99 and pretty much all the reviews on Steam are positive and some people have said they've put in over 80 hours into this game. I really hope you'll consider giving this game a try to support a one-man team making such a cool game. I'll leave a link to the Steam page in the description. Now, if you wanna hear about other great JRPGs from 2022, click into this playlist right here. It's a playlist of all my reviews of this year and years past so far, and I'm sure you'll find a game to enjoy. 
Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.